Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. For me personally, one of the most valuable tools that I carry with me in the woods is a simple folding saw. And for many years, I've been carrying one just like this. This is the well-known Baco Loplander saw. I purchased my first Baco Loplander, I believe, back in 2009. And I actually still have that original Laplander saw. And while the blade is dulled out from many years of use, it's still functional. And over time, I've purchased a couple more, which I've also been using, and both of them for several years. And all three of those saws have held up and had no problems. I have nothing but good things to say about a Baco Loplander. However, when it comes to stacking up firewood fast, the Baco Loplander may not be the best tool suited to that job. And that's where my newest saw comes into play. Several months back, I was in a class and a friend of mine loaned me his silky saw and I made a few cuts with it. And I was very impressed with how fast this saw rips through wood. This particular one that I have here is the Gomboy 240. This is the professional series. And as you can see, mine has the curved blade. And that was something I definitely wanted my saw to have because I like that curve and the way it makes the saw handle. Um, one of the things right off the bat that I noticed between the Baco and the Silky that was different is with the Baco Liplander, you cut on the push and you also cut on the pull. Whereas with any Silky saw, it does not cut when you push, but rather only when you pull back. I've always been taught that when you use a saw, that's actually proper technique anyway. You don't want to push hard and pull hard. If you push that blade and it binds in the material that you're cutting, it can bend and even snap off. And that's one of the complaints I've really heard about silky saws is people snap the blades off. But if you use it really the way it was designed to be used, that should never be an issue because you're pushing light to set yourself up for that hard pull to rip through the material. Anyway, with all that said, over the last few months, I've found out not only how good of a cutting saw this is, but it's also good at a couple of other things. And I wanted to share those with you today. So we're gonna do a little cutting comparison between the Silky and the Baco, and I'll share those other things that I found that this saw does well. So stick with me and let's get started. All right, so let's do a little cutting comparison between the Baco and the Silky. What I have here is a semi-green piece of sweet gum. And I'm gonna start with my Baco first. This piece of wood is about two and a half, maybe three inches in diameter back here at the base. So just using a plumber's vise right here and All right, so the Baco did a good job of cutting through the wood, but you can see was quite a few cuts involved. All right, let's give the Silky a try. Remember, the Baco cuts forward and back, whereas the Silky is only cutting on the pull stroke. So you'll notice a slight different technique in the way I'm cutting. I also noticed that I can see all those shavings coming out, whereas the Baco cuts and makes more of a fine sawdust, I can see more coarse material coming out. All right, let's do another cut with the Silky. All right, let's run one more with the Baco. Getting tired. Just feels like more work when I'm using the Baca versus when I'm using the Silky saw. So both of these saws did a good job making those cuts and they're both capable of getting the job done. It's just that it feels a little more effortless with the Silky Gomboy as opposed to the Baca. One of the most obvious differences when looking at these two saws side by side is the fact that the Baco Liplander has a powder coated blade, whereas the Silky Gomboy is an uncoated blade. And that definitely makes a difference in the multifunctionality of the Silky saw versus the Baco. Let's take a look at what I mean by that right now. 
As a woodsman, we always have to be concerned about what items we have in our kit that we can use to affect our next fire. A lot of times when I go in the woods, I like to carry uh, a classic Mora style knife or even a Scandinavian Puko type knife. And a lot of those knives have a rounded spine. They don't have a 90 degree sharp spine on them. And so I have to be concerned about carrying a striker or carrying a secondary knife like my Garber here that has a 90 degree spine on it. If you're carrying one of those knives and you have a silky saw like this one with you, then you have a sharp 90 degree spine, which will easily throw sparks with your ferrocerium rod. So that's one of the benefits that I've found with this saw is it does a great job of throwing sparks off a of ferro rod. One of the other things that this silky saw does really well is because it has a sharp 90 degree spine, it can do things like process tender material. Like right here on this tulip poplar log, I'm just using that blade to scrape and I'm getting all kinds of good material off of that thing. You can see in just a few scrapes what I'm getting. So this saw really does serve well processing materials like this. And you have a nice comfortable handle too and good leverage because your hand is actually over top of the tool where it's scraping rather than with your knife, you're holding back here and scraping with your blade. Here, your hand can be directly over the material. I just feel like I get a little more leverage with that. Just to show you in that short amount of time, it's making easy work out of collecting some tender material here. So it works great as an improvised spoke shave. Something else that this silky saw does really well because of that sharp 90 degree spine is we can process materials like fat wood. Once again, what I mentioned with the last clip was when you scrape with your knife, your hand is back here and your blade is here on your material. With the silky saw, I can put my hand directly over my material, getting really good leverage. And with that, I can quickly process materials like this fat wood or even that tulip pop poplar bark as you saw. So you can see in just a second, I'm already getting those really fine shavings that we really like to use to make fire with the ferro rod. You can see there, that's really already a, a nice amount of that in just a very short amount of time with very little effort. With the quick combination of the fat wood we processed mixed with that inner bark and a ferro rod, we can easily affect fire with the silky saw. One of the other things that I found that this saw really excels at where it comes to making fire is because it's uncoated and it's a high carbon steel blade, if you have a hard rock, be it a piece of flint, chert, quartz, or whatever you have, this makes an awesome makeshift fire steel. And I'm hoping that you can see how good those sparks are coming off this saw, but it absolutely will work as a flint and steel striker and it gives you a lot of surface actually. It's really probably better than a lot of flint and steel strikers and it works great at igniting charred material. What I have here is just an Altoids tin with some charred punk wood in it. Let's see if we can catch a spark. Hopefully you can see that. So it absolutely works as an improvised flint and steel. All right, so after seeing all this, I hope you have a better understanding of how the Baco Laplander compares to a silky saw and the benefits that a silky saw has to offer. I think the Baco is an excellent saw and especially where it comes to making finer cuts for things like crafting and bushcraft, things like that. But as far as a saw to stack up wood quick, and a saw that can assist you in making fire in multiple ways, processing tender, striking a ferro rod, and even a makeshift uh, flint and steel, a striker, I think that this saw definitely has a place in the woodsman's kit. And it's the one that's been riding in my kit 99% of the time for the last several months since I purchased it. So I hope this gives you a better insight into the saw. 
I hope that you will come back to the channel often and check out future videos, which will be coming soon. If you're interested in this all, I do have an Amazon influencer page. I'll put a link below. There's also one on the home page of my YouTube channel. So please feel free to go and check out this all. That's where I purchased it from and all the information is there. Thank you for your time, your interest, and I look forward to talking to you with another video again very soon. Until that one, take care and God bless.